video, we're going to address a common issue when you're dealing with data. You bring data into your tool and you find that some of the attributes, some of the uh, features aren't set up as the data type you would like. And this is uh, particularly true when you're dealing with regression and you need all numeric data, but it can also be true when you have fields that are categorical but look like numbers, so the tool may guess that they're numeric when you bring them in. So let's take a look at some ways that we can address that. Here, if we're going through um, the reading, we can see we've got a number of options that we can consider when we are looking at different uh, types of data. So let's walk through these one by one. So here we have categories coded as numbers. And so our software tool is going to recognize them as numeric. So in this case, we may have uh, regions that are one, two, three, and four that we have designated. These aren't really numeric values. They're categorical. So if we want our tool to treat them appropriately, we would convert them. Let's see if we can find some examples in our data set. Let's take a look at our repository at the insurance data object. All right, and if I go down to this uh, statistics, I can see, okay, here the, here's the data type, along with some basic statistics I have for each of my attributes. Sex, nominal, age, nominal. Sex numeric is an integer. BMI is a real number. Children, integer, smoker numeric integer, region numeric, integer. So region numeric, let's take a look at that one. That's one that actually has four different categories. And technically, smoker numeric, sex with just two values, sex numeric uh, as an integer. All of these are really categorical variables. They're listed as integers, but this becomes more problematic when we have four different values that really are not numerically related to each other. You know, uh, region four, whichever the one that one is, maybe Southwest, isn't really four times the region that region one, which might be Northeast is. They're all equivalent as far as regions go. Each one is a valid region. So uh, region numeric really is not a good way to measure regions. So let's bring in the insurance data set. So here I've got a numerical to polynomial or polynomial. Let's find that in Rapid Miner. So this goes into blending, attributes, types, and we're going to do numerical to polynomial. All right. So remember what we had, and all we're going to do is we're going to tell it which attribute do we want to work with. And in this case, we'll just choose a single, and we could do it to a subset. So let's do it with a subset, actually. And at this point, it will show me all my numeric attributes. So region numeric is the one we're most interested in, but I could decide to say, let's bring in sex numeric smoker numeric and apply that. Now, when I take a look at my output after running this, and we'll just call this, I'll save this as sample data conversions. So now I click OK, and if I look at my resulting data set that comes out after numerical to polynomial, I can see now that sex numeric is now a nominal feature with two values, smoker numeric, region numeric. Now let's tr take this one other step. And we know that binomial is a special case of polynomial that gives us more capabilities with our modeling tools. So I'm gonna go back into here 
and take Sex and Smoker back out. So let's apply that. And now let's go numerical to binomial. And this works pretty much the same way. I'll just take uh, the attributes sex numeric and smoker numeric now, apply those. And now we run it. And we can see sex numeric is now a binomial. So is smoker numeric. Region numeric is a nominal or a polynomial based on our conversion earlier. So here we have ways to convert our numeric categories. Uh, and this is often the case. You'll see category, categorical data coded up as if it were numeric. But this allows us to convert it back into its true state for our processing. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can find another example. All right, so sometimes you may have numeric data that for some reason when you imported it into your tool or when you bring it in or read it, it uh, gets interpreted as categorical. So let's see what we can do there. So here I've got, uh, let's see, my insurance data. And in this case, children, even though it uh, has um, an integer value, looks like it was imported as a nominal field. All right. So let's see if we bring that in. We've got two different ways we can address this one. I've got parse numbers and I've got guest types. So let's try each one of those and see how it works. And actually, the guest types is actually a, a pretty strong one, but let's do parse numbers. So I bring in parse numbers and I will bring in a subset and I'll take children, it knows that it is only going to try and parse numbers from a categorical variable or a polynomial. All right, so let's take children, apply that, and then let's see what we get. Okay, so my output now has converted children to a numeric field. So I've got a numeric I can convert it to an integer if I want at this point with another operator. All right, let's do the guest types, which is a uh, kind of a fun one to work with. And you can see that's just a couple below parse numbers. So I'll bring guest types in. And guest types, just like it sounds, is going to review all the attributes if I let it, or I can tell it just to do a couple and it will make a guess as to what data type each attribute should be. So let's run that. It generally does a pretty good job. So now we can see sex numeric has been converted not only to numeric, but an integer. So it knows, oh, that's not the one we want, children, is an integer. 0, 1, 2, 3. So it knows it's all whole numbers by walking its way through that attribute and figuring things out. So the guest types is actually a pretty strong one and one that you'll find fairly useful. Okay, let's see if we can find another one. So another category is indicator attributes that we have recognized as numeric. So we actually did that one when we were addressing this one up top. We had a couple like sex and um, let's see what else we had. Smoker. And we converted both of those to binominals. So that's numerical to binominal. Okay, so now a binominal or a binomial categorical attribute is recognized as a polynomial. Okay, so here we could say, if I just look at
smoker and sex, those are right now considered just nominal. We want them to be binomial. Okay, so now I will uh, convert those nominal to binomial. I will select a subset. And in this case, we will do uh, sex and smoker. So when I apply that and run it, you can see sex and smoker are now binominals instead of just plain old nominals. All right. Okay, so that is binomials interpreted as just plain old nominals or nom um, polynomials. Okay, let's say we have a text field that has been identified as nominal. For this one, we're going to use an SMS text messaging file. So you may have that uh, available from where you downloaded uh, the reading that accompanies this video. I'm going to go ahead and import that into my repository. And you can see in the import, text is identified as a polynomial. And I don't even have the option of changing it to a text data type. So I import it finish, and this is just going to be SMS spam. And you can see text is a nominal field, spam ham also. All right. So I could go and edit it. And at this point, I have the option of now changing text to an actual text field, but I can also do that with an operator. So I'll drag SMS spam in. And now I want to change nominal to text. So I'll bring this in here, connect. And for the attribute type, I will just use a single. So if I use single, then I just choose one here and I just want the text. Okay, that's a pretty straightforward change. Now I run my process, and if I look at my fields now, text is now text field spam ham, still a polynomial. So in this uh, operation, I would probably want to change that to a binomial. All right, so we've covered a, a fair bit of ground. What's the last one? Okay, so categorical attributes can't be used in regression. So a state abbreviation would be a good example, but I can also think about, oh, these regions that I've got in my insurance data. So I'm going to bring the insurance data back in. So region right now is a nominal field. And it's southwest, northwest, southeast, northeast. What I want to do is I want to convert this to four indicator attributes so that we could then use it in regression. All right. I've got a couple different approaches I can do here. Nominal to numerical would work. So let's do nominal to numerical. Now, I will choose the one single subset I want. I could choose all of these if I want, but let's focus on region. Yeah, I changed my mind. Let's do all three of them. Region, sex, and smoker. Okay, so now I can do different types of coding here. I could actually do dummy coding. 
um, which is a 1-0. Effect coding, which is a, a kind of a variation on dummy coding, where instead of 1-0, we've got 1, negative 1. And then unique integers, where I assign just uh, unique integers to each value, which gets us back to the approach we were using before, where we had assigned numbers to each region. So that's not a really good approach. Uh, we'll use dummy encoding. Okay, so dummy coding, let's take a look and see what happens when we run this. Okay, so now I have sex female, sex male as two dummies. I also have smoker, yes or no. I also have region, southwest, southeast, northwest, and northeast. So I've basically converted these three categorical variables into eight indicator variables. All right. So that's nominal to numerical. Another variation on this is one called one hot encoding. There it is. So if I bring that in, let's do that with the same subset. And I'll leave the defaults here. And let's see how this one works. One hot encoding gives us a nice data set that doesn't require us to manipulate it anymore because instead of creating a dummy for every possible value, it just creates n minus one dummies or indicators for each categorical. So here it just took male, one or zero, smoker, one or zero, no, not smoker, one or zero, and then three of the four regions, because as we know with regression, if we include all of the categorical values as dummies, we end up with a um, collinearity problem in our regression model, which uh, tends to either make it blow up or make it uh, calculate forever, unable to uh, come up with a solution. So, one hot encoding is a good one to remember for that. And I think that walks us through a pretty good range of capabilities for you to address as you come across uh, problems that you might need to fix just with data types. So that's a good stopping point for this video. Let's get back and see what we'd like to do next.